Hey guys, I took a class in college that was uh, microcontroller architecture. And uh, during that class, we essentially built a microcontroller, but we only built it uh, in, in test beds, right? So we built it and we tested it with a test bed and then we built a very simple compiler for the microcontroller and uh, tested that. But I wanted, I've always wanted to take that microcontroller and, and put it into hardware and see if it would work. So I thought this would be a great uh, learning environment for me to relearn this all this stuff and a great learning environment for you guys to learn a lot about what you know what makes a microcontroller and stuff like that and how to how to put some of this stuff together. So I'll start out this video series by showing you guys how to build a function unit which includes the ALU and a shifter and, and just kind of the tie together logic. Then we'll build from that to make more and more of the microcontroller until we can put it all together into one final piece. So for this video I'll go through the presentation that I used to uh, show what I'd done with the actual function unit. It gives you the code and, and it'll give you guys the code and it'll go through and show all the different parts and how they work. Uh, for the next video, what I'll do is I'll put that in hardware for you guys and we'll see if we can get that up and running in hardware. Then we can move on to the next piece and the next piece and the next piece and, and ultimately hopefully put them all together. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So to give you guys an idea of what we're building here, it's this function unit section down here. Um, it's got a few inputs. We've got G select, which has uh, S2 down to zero, uh, carry in. You've got outputs of VC, NZ, uh, an input of MF select for this mux over here, uh, H select for shifting. Uh, you've got an A input and a B input for the two separate register inputs. And then you have this output down here, which is the ultimate output of the function unit. Within this guy, you've got your arithmetic logic unit. Uh, you've got a shifter um, and then a few other tiny little pieces to, to get this guy going. Uh, it seems pretty simple, but when you start to put all this stuff together, it's how you wind up with a with a microcontroller, right? So i give you guys this this block here. Um, this actually came from a book that we used in class. Uh, it was Mano and Kime. Mano and Kime. Um, I'll put a link for this down below in the description. Uh, it's Logic and Computer Design Fundamentals Second Update or Second Edition. Um, just in case you guys want to follow along and use the book. Um, otherwise, this series should be able to show you most of the stuff that you need to know. Um, but this is a great book anyways to go through and uh, and help with this sort of thing. Um, so let's go ahead and move into the presentation for this guy, um, building a, a function unit um, for microarchitecture. And this is the code for the arithme arithmetic logic unit, which is that left box there. And what it does is take care of all your math and your logic, right? So pretty simple in Verilog. Uh, thankfully, it's just these are a bunch of if statements. So you have, uh, I'm going to assign C, which is going to be our carry flag and ALU result, which is the actual result coming from the ALU. I'm assigning that to all these different if statements. So it's kind of like a big case statement, right? So our input code is G. Um, and that comes from previously what you saw in the diagram uh, over here. You have G coming in, right? And then you have A and B coming in. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to check G what G is, is going to tell us what to do as far as arithmetic or logic on the A and B registers here. So G is actually the code that drives the decision and also whether a carry is coming in as well. So let's head back over to the example over here. So if G is say zero, 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 it's just going to pass a through. If G is zero, 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 one, it's going to do a plus one. So like an increment. Uh, 0010 is going to be A plus B. Uh, 0011 is going to be A plus B plus 1, so A plus B plus increment. Uh, then 0100 will be A plus not B. Uh, then 0101 is going to be A plus negative B. And then 0110 is A plus negative 1, so minus 1. And 0111 is just A. A again. So you'll notice that this is broken up. Um, if this left column here is not a one, it's going to be some sort of arithmetic uh, operation. If the left bit is one, then it's going to be a logic operation. So from there, uh, so all zeros is just going to be A and B logic. Uh, zero one zero is going to be A or B. One zero zero is going to be A X or B. And one 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 zero is going to be not a. And at the very end here, you'll see that there's this nine bit um, of x or don't care. So this is like a big case statement, right? And we go through, and it'll filter through all these. And if it can't find one of those, it's just going to drop don't care conditions or or x's. So really, that's a simple way to look at an ALU here. 
Um, there's a lot of little details in there. If you guys have questions about it, uh, throw them through. So from here, let's carry on. So now we're going to talk about the C flag, and uh, this is also kind of where a lot of this other stuff comes from. Um, so the C flag is, is basically just the, the bit at the very end of this result. Um, so it's our carry out, right? So if any operation results in a, in a carry or one bit that goes over um, that can be carried on to the, the next operation or whatever, then that will fall into that C bit on the left side of the assign. Now, to set the ALU up properly, um, we had to set up some wires here. We're going to have intercarry. We're going to use that later for our overflow bit. We've got not B, which I may have called negative B earlier, but I meant not B. So not B is, is for our ones complementary up here. So if you want to do a ones complementary add um, for some sort of subtraction. And then we have the not B plus one, which is going to be our actual negative B. So if we wanted to do A plus negative B, which is a different type of subtraction, right? Uh, and then we also have our negative one, uh, which is just going to be all bits of one, right? So if we wanted to decrement something. Um, so that's our, our C flag is pretty simple, uh, pretty straightforward. It just carries on to the end of the operation. Now we have our overflow flag. I mean, what we did is we created this same situation with all of these guys, um, but we're going to take that and make that into an inner carry register. And we're going to take that and we're going to XOR that with, with our carry bit. And that'll tell us if we've had an overflow. Um, so you've got this kind of if statement here. Uh, if this XOR operation is a one, we'll set it to one. If this XOR operation is a zero, uh, we'll set it to zero. And so that's how we get our, our overflow flag on there. Uh, now the implementation of this guy, this is just the simulation or the test bed that I built to test and see that uh, everything's working properly. Um, so we're going to test the flow through. We're going to test A plus one, A plus B, A plus B plus one. Uh, so this is just the result of the A plus not B and then uh, A minus B, which is A plus not B plus one, A minus one, which will be nine and then A. So I've set up these guys here as just a static number so that I can run through all these test cases. And what you'd ultimately do is run through all the edges, um, all the corners and make sure that everything, everything works fine. Um, so, and then of course, uh, we've got a logic test down here to do kind of the same thing. It's going to run through all the logic between these two guys. So this is the ALU simulation. Uh, if you go through and look at these numbers, it should match everything that we were trying to do. Um, and it shows you know, how the, the V flag carries over and the C flag carries over. If you want, I'd suggest pausing this and going through and doing the math on each one and seeing if it works properly. And you'll notice that uh, we go through the G codes. That was all that, that for loop there was just to run through all the G codes here to get the different math and different logic running on it. Um, you'll see we're looking at all the outputs here, the errors and stuff like that. Next uh, part of that function controller there is the shifter. Uh, shifter is pretty simple, um, but it still has to be built. And we've kind of built these as two separate modules. So we have the ALU is one module, the shifter is another module. Then we'll combine those with, with uh, a single module to kind of bring them together. Um, so the shifter is pretty simple. You have an input of H. Let's go ahead and go look at that guy real quick. So on here we have uh, input of H and an input, which is the B register. Um, and those go into the shifter. We have this uh, input here, IR, and input for IL. That's if we're shifting a zero onto the right or shifting a, a zero onto the left. Uh, and then we have our output of H. And this MF selector down here is going to select whether we're going from the arithmetic logic unit or the shifter. But that should be in this top module, which we're going to call this whole piece, blue piece here, a module. Um, so this is kind of the shifter, and that's what we're looking at right now over here. And uh, essentially, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to look at H, which was that input. If it's 0, 0, we're just going to pass B straight through. If it's 0, 1, then we're going to pass 7 down to 1 of B with a 0 appended to the left. So I'm basically shifting that whole thing right. If it's 1, 0, if H is 1, 0, then we're going to take 6 down to 0, and we're going to append a 0 to the right. So we're back actually shifting it left in that case. And if it's none of these guys, it should be, but you always want an else case, right? So if it's say one, one, which isn't in here, then we'll just put out, we don't care, eight bits of X, right? And we end the module. So the shifter is actually a pretty quick and simple module. Um, so let's move forward. Um, we're going to implement this. So we're basically just testing this. We're throwing a test bed down to test it. Uh, like I said, I never actually put this code through uh, and put it into an FPGA. And that's actually what I plan to do with this video series here is kind of build the thing out and see if it works fine for us. So what I'm doing is just shifting through those codes again um, for H. So we're going we're gonna to increase H every single time, and we'll test all these cases here. And essentially all we did, we set B to be all ones. It makes it easier to look at. Uh, so we, we test zero, and uh, the test should be 
one, 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 one. And I set up this test variable just to be able to check against, right? So the test at zero should be one, 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 one. Test of H of one is gonna shift to the right, so that'll be zero and then ones, and then a test of two should be a shift to the left, so we'll have ones and then a zero after that. And that's just our simple little test bed there to test it. Um, this is what we did here. If you look, here's our H, we have zero, zero, um, which should be doing nothing, and it does nothing. We have zero, one, which should be a shift to the right, and if you look, uh, our B is, is still all ones, and we shifted it to the right, and this is our test, so that shows that that matches. Um, and this also gives you kind of the timing on everything, right, to show you if things change, when they change, and how they change. And then we have our one zero here where we're shifting to the left. So those match, so we're good to go. And our shifter seems to work just fine. Now, putting it all together, I made a top module for just these units, and I could take that top module and put it into another higher-up module um, to build out the processor ultimately. But to stick all these guys together, you notice there's a bunch of stuff outside of everything, right? So we use this function unit top module to kind of put all those together. Um, so in this, we're going to have our input, which is FS, and FS actually equals MF plus or MF concatenated with S2 down to zero and CN. So technically it's MF concatenated with G, right? So that's our FS input here, right? Uh, and then for input A is just going to be our register A and input B is going to be our register B. And then we're going to have our output, which is just F. It's the output of the function unit, right? And then we'll have our outputs flags here. So we've got V for overflow, C for carry, N for our negative flag, and Z for zero. Um, and all these guys, if you've, if, you've worked in, if you've worked in hardware languages such as assembly and stuff, you know that these are all very useful. Um, say you're doing a subtraction and you want to jump if zero, then uh, basically you do the subtraction, then you check, and then you run the jump if zero, and that'll check the zero flag to see if you should jump or not, right? So those are our flags that'll go to our flag register, right? Uh, so then we set up these wires. We've got MF, which is FS. So this is just breaking out those those inputs there, right? So we've got uh, FS equals MF, S2 down to zero and CN. So we've got MF is just the fourth bit of that. Uh, then we've got, or the fifth bit of that, which is four. Uh, and then we've got our G, which is G select here, and that's going to be three down to zero. So that's going to include our S2 down to zero and our carry in from FS there. And then our H, which is going to be three down to two of our FS there. Uh, and then we've got our ALU result, which is just coming out of here. And we have our S, our shifter result, which is just coming out of here. Then all we do is instantiate these guys. So I instantiate the arithmetic logic unit and I pass the different values the way they should be passed. So I'm passing in G from G, I'm passing in A from A, I'm passing in B from B. I'm passing out the ALU result into ALU result and uh, passing out V and C from V and C. And then we instantiate the shifter module here and we're going to pass those just the same, H for H, B for B. S result for S result. And then at the very end here, we're going to assign all these together, right? So we have N, which is coming out our negative flag here, is going to equal the ALU result 7, which is our negative uh, bit on our registers. And then we've got Z, which is going to equal not or ALU result. So if you OR all of ALU together and then you not it, you can tell if it's a zero or not. And then our F, which is going to be a, a kind of cased situation here. And that case situation is, is the MUX here that you're looking at. So the zero detect here is actually what you're looking at here. Uh, negative is just a straight line, so you can see it's just a straight line. If you look at our MF select here, that's an actual choice that has to be made. So we need some sort of case statement or if statement to do that. So if MF is equal to zero, so if the MF bit comes through and is zero, that means we're pulling from the arithmetic logic unit, then our F is going to equal the ALU result. If MF is 1, that means we're saying our MUX should should pull from the shifter unit, then it's going to equal S result. And then we always want some sort of default case here, just in case anything goes wrong, because you should always have a default case. And then we end the module. So that's all for the, the top module there. And then what we did is, what I did is just go through and simulate that module to make sure that everything was working, flowing down from inputs and outputs. Um, so if you want, as before, you can go through and pause this and check all those results if you'd like to make sure that the arithmetic is working the way that we think it should, the logic, the shift, and all that. And I've got this broken up into three separate spaces here. This is where the arithmetic's happening. This is where the logic's happening. And this is where the shift's happening. So that's kind of the ALU. What we'll do next week is build that onto, say, maybe the basis 2 board. Uh, I haven't decided on that for sure. I could put on the basis or the mojo, and I also have the Ultra 96 here. 
Um, seems kind of useless to put it on the Ultra 96 since it's already got processors on board. But uh, if you guys have a preference, please comment below and I'll maybe just add all those together and see what, what people want the most. Uh, otherwise, I'll probably just go with the bases too because it's all set up and ready to roll. Don't forget to like this video, guys. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and hit that notification bell if you want to be updated when things happen. Uh, have a great day, guys, and don't forget to love well.